Now we will go to Italy to uh, Dulio Gianmaria, who tried on a couple of occasions to yes, ask a question. Hello. So we will try this Hi. time, please. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so can I can I ask you what's the what's the WHA stance on antibodies testing? Have you already approved some of them? And is that a good practice that uh, we widely use tests for antibodies before the lockdown is actually over? And of course, the immunity passport also is that a good uh, a good uh, idea that comes from Germany? I think is it, is that feasible for countries such as Italy? Thank you. Thank you for the testing. There's there's a very large number of molecular tests and serologic tests that are now available um, for use. Um, some of which um, have gone through approvals in their in their countries, regulatory approvals. Um, we are working with a number of countries right now that are looking at the use of serologic assays in the form of research, where they are looking to estimate the seroprevalence or the antibody levels in populations in their countries. Um, there's a number of countries across Europe and across Asia that are currently doing this, um, and they're looking at different types of tests. They're looking at screening assays, um, which are ELISAs, but they're also looking at micro-neutralization micro assays, which are more confirmatory testing. Um, we, there, there is a large amount of work right now, and we're working with FIND, and we're working with other uh, groups that are trying to evaluate these against a well-characterized um, panel of CIRA from infected individuals and non-infected individuals or controls, um, and those, that work is still underway. Um, what we would like to be able to do in the form of research is to be able to compare some of those serologic assays um, with individuals who are known to have been infected so identified through molecular testing. Um, and all of this work is underway. Uh, but there are a number of tests that are available, and this is very positive um, in terms of being four months into, a, early four months into a pandemic, um, where they were rapidly developed because full genome sequences were shared um, very quickly by, the, by China. Just add, uh, the tests that are currently being used the, the, are, are PCR-type tests that detest, detect the virus, and usually in the nose, nasal cavities of individuals. So if someone is symptomatic and they get tested, you, you test for the virus. The serologic tests don't test for the virus. They test for the immune response to the virus. And they say you've had a recent infection or maybe not so recent infection, and there are different parts of that test for IgM, which tells you if you've had a very recent infection or still infectious, and uh, IgG, which says you've had an infection at some time in the past. So we have to be careful in using these tests that they may diagnose you as having had the infection, but they're not necessarily uh, used in the active diagnosis of an active case. You can be sick and infected with the virus, and you may not have yet developed a serologic response to the virus. So how these tests are used has to be very carefully calibrated. We welcome all the innovation, and we need a comprehensive set of testing tools, but they need to be rolled out <clears throat> with the careful objectives of what they're actually supposed to achieve. Uh, but we do welcome the innovation, we welcome the private sector innovation, and we welcome uh, governments introducing these testing into their national policies uh, in, in the appropriate way. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll 